Hello everyone. In this session, let us understand a few challenges that are faced by the designers when it comes to designing a bus system. You can understand rather you can ask me a question. What is the problem in designing a bus system? Because bus system simply involves in a transfer. And when, when it comes to making a transfer, what is the exact problem? I'll put it this way. When you talk about a transfer, the transfer can happen in between several locations. First, understand all those locations, all those possible locations can be participating in these transfers when it comes to a computer system. When you talk about a transfer, the transfer could be either in between two registers within the processor, rather in between one processor's register and a main memory location, are in between two main memory locations, are in between main memory location to a processor, or vice versa. But when you attach a few devices to the computer system, also the devices can participate in this transfer rather. That is, a transfer can happen in between register to the devices, or devices to the registers, or from main memory to the devices, or from devices to the main memory. Here, as there are too many locations to distinguish in between, the designer has to specifically design, rather carefully design a bus system in which an appropriate transfer is going to be made. First of all, he has to make a clear distinguish in between memory transfers and I.O. transfers. When you talk about a memory transfer, the memory transfer is an internet transfer within the computer system because the main memory is attached to the CPU motherboard. When a transfer is happening in between the CPU and the main memory, this transfer is just nothing but an internal transfer. But when a transfer is uh, happening in between a peripheral device and a main memory or a processor register, then this is an external transfer. And a bus system has to be carefully designed in order to distinguish in between these external transfers and internal transfers. Once again, if a transfer happens in between register to the memory locations, then it comes under internal transfers. But when a transfer takes place in between peripheral devices to the system, then it comes under external transfers. So a bus system has to be carefully designed. Now let us understand in how many ways these bus systems can be designed. The first way is a complex way. That is, a designer can go for two separate bus systems. You know that there are three lines in the bus system. One is data bus, second one is address bus, and the third one is control bus. A bus system comprises of these four, three lines rather. Data bus, to which the data element will get transferred. Address bus, to which an address will get transferred. Finally, the address will get located either in the main memory or in the interfaces, registers. And finally, there needed to be a control line because the various control command can be used and sent to this control line to specify one specific control command for the specific transfer. So now, in order to design a separate bus, rather, in order to design a bus system, the first approach by a designer is to design two separate bus systems. One is for memory, and one more is for I.O. devices. So, designer uses two separate bus systems, that is, separate data line, address line, and control line for main memory and separate data line, address line, and control line for I.O. devices. This is called distinct I.O. In the distinct I.O., the CPU uses two separate buses. It uses one bus to communicate to the main memory. It uses another bus to communicate to the I.O. device. But let us understand something very clearly and carefully here, that is, if a designer chooses two separate bus system to communicate with the main memory and I.O. devices, he has to use two different processors. One is the main processor anyhow. This processor could be your A0, A6, or I3, or I7, or whatever. This is the main processor, which actually performs the, you know, the, basic, the, the basic tasks of a processor, whatever you call it. But in order to make an I.O. transfer, as the computer system is equipped with another specific bus system, we do require a separate processor 
that is needed to be embedded to the computer system. This processor is called an I/O processor. Once again, in a nutshell, in order to design the bus system, the first approach that a designer can take is a separate bus system to communicate with the main memory as well to communicate with the I/O devices. He uses a separate bus system. But in order to accomplish this, in order to achieve this, he has to use two separate processors. One processor is anyhow the main processor. The another one is the I/O processor. What is the difference between the main processor and an I/O processor? If there is a transfer has to be made in between CPU to the main memory, this processor is going to take care of the specific transfer. But when a transfer is going to take place in between I/O devices and the system, then the I/O processor is going to take care of the specific transfer. Let us see in more detail how these two different kinds of a process are going to take place when we use two separate bus systems. Let us see that um, I'm using a processor. There are several I/O devices, and there is main. You know that. Here I am using two separate bus systems. One bus system will talk to the main memory, and another bus system is going to talk with the peripheral devices. Let us put it this way. But now, in order to Manage and maintain two separate bus systems. Our computer system requires two processors. One processor will take care of this bus system, which deals with the I/O device. Another processor, which is called a main processor, which is our eight zero eight six R I three, will take care of the actual transfer which happens in between the CPU and the main memory, or main memory to the CPU water. Now let us understand more precisely how this is exactly going to happen. Every transfer is going to take place when an instruction is executed. You know that instructions are classified into three different categories. One is memory reference instructions. Second one is register reference instructions, and the third one is I/O instructions. You know that. If you want to make a transfer in between register to register or register to the main memory, the instruction would be definitely falling in between memory reference instructions or register reference instruction. For an example, there might be a memory reference instruction called load. When load instruction gets executed from the main memory to a processor's register, the data will get transferred. When the store instruction will get executed from the processor's register to the main memory. A data will get transferred. Similarly, if a transfer has to take in between the registers within the processor, then we may use a register reference instructions. But if you want to make an I/O transfer, you need to use an I/O instruction. For an example, if you want to transfer a character to a printer, you need to use one instruction called out. Then this out instruction makes a transfer from CPU to that specific device. Now here it goes. How our processors are going to involve in these transfers? Of course, when you execute a program, this program may blend all these instructions together because you don't distinguish in between these three kinds of uh, uh, instructions. If you write a program, being a programmer, you are going to uh, write several lines of code in which all these instructions are going to be a part. Now, generally. to the main processor all these instructions will be supplied this main processor is going to examine the instruction before it gets executed if the instruction is falling in one of these two categories then this processor is going to execute that specific instruction because these two uh, you know kind of instructions is going to make a transfer from the cpu to the main memory only that is if a transfer has to happen in between the cpu and the main memory it could be either a memory reference instructions or a register reference instruction if it is a cpu to memory instruction 
it will be falling under memory reference instruction if it is a cpu register to the cpu register transfer then it will be falling under register reference instruction so before executing any instruction a process the main processor is going to examine under what category of the instruction this specific instruction is falling if it finds out that this instruction is falling either in this one of these two categories then this processor is going to execute this specific instruction if it is not falling in these two categories definitely this instruction is going to fall in the io instructions category then that comes under io transfer when an io transfer has to be made you know that the job is the job does belong to the second processor which is called an io processor immediately this processor is going to transfer this instruction to the io processor then the io processor is going to execute that io instruction as a result an io transfer is going to be made from either the processor register to the peripheral devices or from peripheral device to the processor register or main memory this way the instructions will get filtered among the main processor and io processor main processor will be able to execute only those instruction which makes a transfer from memory to the register or register to the register or register to the memory obviously you know that the categories of the instruction which which, which performs this either the memory reference instruction or the register reference instruction but when there comes an io instruction and the processor finds out that the incoming instruction is an io instruction then this io instruction will be transferred to the io processor in which the io instruction gets executed as a result the io transfer is going to take place so this is the first choice by a designer to design a bus system when the designer chooses to use two separate bus systems he will use two separate processors one is the regular processor another one is the io processor in the next session we will examine the other ways of designing a bus system to make a transfer from memory to the processor's register or from the system to io devices thank you